My name is Tom Walsh. I'm the state representative from the 12th Essex District, which is wards one through four and ward five, precincts one and three in Peabody. I represent the residents of Peabody at the State House. It's hard to believe that my first full term back is nearing completion. And it's remarkable to me that the time has, has really flown by, but it has been quite a journey. The last couple of years have been very interesting as far as the work that we've been able to do, the advocacy on behalf of the residents of Peabody, and uh, a few success stories, fortunately. We've completed two balanced budgets, uh, which is very important for all the programs that are facilitated through state government to local communities. In this last budget, we were, we were fortunate in that we increased the Chapter 90 money. Chapter 90 is the roads and bridges assistance that the state offers to communities. So when you partner with your community, and we partner with the city of Peabody, obviously, um, we use that money to repair some of the streets and, and sidewalks throughout the, the, the entire city. It was roughly uh, $1.25 million in the FY19 budget for road work. Chapter 70 money was increased as well. Chapter 70 is your school aid money. We had a significant increase in the, uh, in the budget this year for education overall, and I think that's very important. I was fortunate enough in an amendment in the budget that we were able to get an additional $100,000 to keep our kindergarten class sizes at a manageable level. And that's really important because, as, as we all know, uh, when we're just getting our our young students in, the smaller the class size, the more attention they're given, and the better foundation they have as they progress through the public school system. So that's always, that's always good. The current administration has been very helpful to the city of Peabody. We have been the recipient of um, several grants uh, for flood mitigation. Um, you know, it wasn't too long ago when the lieutenant governor was here at the uh, Veterans Memorial Park over in uh, the East End. To illustrate uh, the partnership that they want with the city of Peabody, uh, two grants totaling just under a half a million dollars for flood mitigation. Uh, and recently, uh, the Lieutenant Governor was back for the uh, Complete Streets program, which is uh, the Perkins Street project. In addition to that, I have been able to, in the budget and in the bond bills, include some money that we'll have to work on over the course of the next couple of years to actually get some of that funding but at least it's there, we're at the table, and that's a, a 1.2 million for flood mitigation in downtown, and that's the, the Brody's block um, it's for the, when, that, when that building will be raised in the park and, and some hopefully flood mitigation along the river uh, when that project occurs. You know, when you look again at uh, some of the legislation that has been passed in the last several years, uh, pretty impressive list of accomplishments, I think. Um, you know, we've, we've done things on women's rights, uh, worker uh, safety, uh, when, when a woman is expecting a child, making sure that there are accommodations for her. Uh, we had a significant uh, criminal justice reform bill that we adopted. You know, other pieces of legislation include, we are now requiring a civics component to our curriculum, uh, which is really important. You know, we find sometimes uh, we'll get calls here at the State House and it will be somebody really looking for the congressman. Um, sometimes people don't realize the differentiation between what's happening in Washington and what's happening here in, in Boston from Massachusetts specifically. So we think it's important, especially in, in today's environment. Other legislation that I think is important and really will change the way uh, we vote really is automatic voter registration will occur. That was adopted by the House so that when you go to the registry of motor vehicles and I believe it's Mass Health. Um, you can register to vote while you're there and then that will automatically go to your clerk's office so that it will give more people exposure to registering to vote and hopefully increase the numbers of people who are actually participating in, in the voting system. Um, there's another bill I get questions on a lot and it's called the Grand Bargain. The Grand Bargain really was a compilation of several pieces of legislation that were uh, cobbled together into one bill. Uh, some of them would have been initiative uh, petitions, they would have been ballot questions uh, this November. Uh, one of them was minimum wage, uh, another was the uh, permanent sales tax holiday. Moving forward, that will be permanent. So it will be factored into the budget uh, when we do our planning. And, and actually the budget, hard to believe that uh, our revenue projections and, and deciding what we will have for revenue for the FY20 budget really begins uh, in December. So the work for next year's budget, believe it or not, is beginning already. But also, we are seeing the fruits of our labor with uh, the money that I had advocated 
for here, along with uh, Representative Speliotis and Senator Lovely, uh, regarding uh, money for a trolley study. And for those of you who aren't aware of, of what we're envisioning is utilizing the rail spur that runs from Peabody Square right near Century Bank and it really goes all the way over to the Salem Depot, the Salem train station and we think that there is opportunity there for some type of uh, trolley system that could ferry people from downtown Peabody over to Salem and vice versa. Uh, we think it has an economic benefit to downtown Peabody. The Registry of Motor Vehicles is an issue that we've been working on since I think we walked through the door here at the State House. Uh, it has been a long journey I am happy to say that we are close to uh, seeing the realization of a full service registry opening um, on the Danvers Peabody line. Yeah. Um, it is right behind the Harbor Freight Terminal. Uh, it's called, I believe, Danvers Crossing. But it, it's, I think it's an excellent location for registry services. It has plenty of parking. Uh, you have easy access on and off the highway. And, uh, it's something that has been a long time coming. So unfortunately, we have been without a full service registry on the North Shore for the last two years. And uh, things seem to be on schedule and we think this is a positive thing and long overdue. One of the other issues that we have been working on for the last, oh, a little bit over a year, I would say, and it's not necessarily a legislative issue, but it does involve uh, various state agencies and, and really working with all my colleagues uh, again, Senator Lovely, Representative Speliotis, Mayor Betancourt, the City Council, has been the issue of sound barriers along Route 128. The Waters River Bridge, which is technically in Danvers, is in dire need of replacement. And what that resulted in is uh, conversations with the neighbors on the uh, Tammy Lane, Reynolds Road, Loris Road area about sound barriers because they are close to the highway. The construction is going to uh, move the highway in a little bit, four feet on either side. Uh, and what happened was when they agreed to do the sound study, we found out that not only did Tammy Lane qualify for sound barriers, but so did the residents on Esquire Drive, which is on the northbound side. And ultimately it has been decided that that will be part of the construction project, which will go out to bid sometime in early 2019. I don't want people to think we're always fighting with MassDOT. They have been a terrific partner for the city of Peabody. Um, if you look around, not only this project as it moves forward, um, but there has been a repaving project that many of you probably have endured over the last several months. Uh, if you travel 128 in the uh, late evening, they have been repaving. And it's really, it, it really helps us uh, not only aesthetically, uh, there's safety issues, uh, obviously the aesthetics, but it's also an economic benefit, especially when you have the North Shore Mall and the Liberty Tree Mall in Danvers, uh, people traveling that way, it's very helpful. That is the. Uh, the first step. MassDOT has also recently agreed to um, put the uh, little flashing lights on top of the traffic lights from Esquire Drive and every intersection going right down 114 to Danvers. And that's an issue that I've had discussions with our police officers and our fire personnel because uh, when you're stopped at a, a traffic light and the emergency vehicle is coming through, that little light flashes and it warns everybody so they're slowing down and it's safer for not only the drivers, but also the uh, emergency personnel coming through. Yes, those will be replaced all from Esquire Drive down. Um, and that really, as we talk about repaving, uh, Route 114 has a, uh, a reconstruction project that is in the works, and uh, that will be advertised probably in the next year or two. So MassDOT has been a terrific partner. One of the last issues that I was working on as a city councilor before my term uh, ended was working with the uh, Fire Chief, Chief Pazden, the Mayor's Office, um, several other groups, and the uh, Allergy Awareness Group, um, trying to create a pilot program where EpiPens would be on the fire trucks and could be administered in the case of emergency. Um, you know, somebody who has uh, anaphylactic shock uh, needs an EpiPen immediately. So having them on all of our fire trucks and knowing they can be administered fairly quickly is a big deal. So, you know, hopefully we never have to use them, but there's something very reassuring knowing that we have that. So that was another partnership of uh, city, state working together to make that happen. You know, I, I think I've mentioned before when we have these conversations that the number one issue and the number one request we get in our office is housing. And it really runs the gamut. It's, it's not just, um, what sometimes we perceive as uh, 
you know, low income housing, it's, it's every demographic. And we work with our housing authorities and I think we did some remarkable work this year in the legislature as far as um, funding new housing projects and encouraging new development uh, across the state. Um, in Peabody we've had an issue uh, that really we've been working on uh, pretty heavily the last couple months and that's, you know, again, the mayor and his office, community development, um, Senator Lovely and myself, uh, Pete McGinn who was the Ward 2 Councilor, but that is the tannery which is uh, Crown and Shield, uh, Crown and Shield Street in Peabody and roughly 284 units of, of housing which has been subsidized over the last 40 years and once that 40 years is completed the owner can then sell at market rate to someone if, if they so choose. We are in the middle of that now. We are in the middle of negotiations with, um, with the owners and everybody has an investment here. The city will make a little bit of an investment. It, it's a lot from the city's perspective, but uh, this is a $37.5 million sale price and a significant amount of money, um, if we can put this together, will be uh, state assistance. Uh, I would suggest to you that it will be in the range of $10 million from the state. Uh, and then the, the uh, private investor will uh, make their investment and what that will do, it will, it will save those units um, as far as it continuing to be um, public housing and it counts towards the 10% requirement that we have for low to moderate income housing in the community. Um, we need basically 180 units of affordable housing to meet that 10%. If we lost an additional 280, uh, it would set the city of Peabody back many years. So uh, hopefully that will come to fruition in the next few weeks. And speaking of housing, uh, it was interesting recently Realtor.com ranked some of the hottest real estate markets in the nation and in the top 10 is the city of Peabody. What's impressive about that ranking is that there are people looking at Peabody willing to invest saying this is a great community for a lot of reasons but it's nice to see that we are in the running as a pretty impressive community for people to look at and invest in. So, you know, I always say that um, the accomplishments that um, we talk about here don't happen because it's me. It really happens because there's a partnership among a lot of people. Uh, working closely with Senator Lovely and Representative Speliotis, my colleagues here at the State House, and I am truly honored to be the state representative on Beacon Hill advocating for the residents of Peabody. And if anybody's trying to uh, reach me, I can be reached at the State House office at 617-722-2676. And by email, it is thomas.walsh at mahouse.gov. Lastly, I'd, I'd just like to say thank you to the viewers for watching, taking the time to listen, and, and hopefully this has been informative as far as the things that I think are important to uh, making PVD a better place to live. Again, my contact information is, is part of this show and feel free anytime to call me. I'm also around town a lot. And uh, you know, as I was saying to the crew a few minutes ago, um, my mother always told me when I was a kid that she couldn't wait till I was on radio or TV so that she could turn me off. So with that, I'm done for today's session. Thank you again for listening and uh, we'll talk soon.